there's a lot of small things to know in Path of Exile. I'm always surprised by how many things I don't know after playing the game for so long and how I can learn from other people who do completely different things in the game than I do. So when I recently on my stream over on twitch.tv slash Palstron discussed this topic and I wanted to have like 10 to 20 important tips and tricks, it kind of evolved to something completely different. The way these are ordered is there's mostly new player tips at the very start and getting to the middle of the video and then slowly but surely there's more intricate things but my goal was definitely that no matter how much hours you have into the game you at least learn something new but yeah with that said let's get into it number one you should definitely follow a build guide when first starting out path of exile now i know what you might say pal you don't understand i'm completely crazy at these kind of games it doesn't matter this game has a ton of content bloat from over a decade of the game being out you want to focus on learning what's going on in this game and not having to also engage with how to set up your build because that is just another layer on top. If you still want to go ahead and try it blind, that's totally fine. Just know that you're basically a toddler in a maths class. I point this out so strongly because I know a lot of people who didn't follow a build guide and then just quit and said PoE is not for them when later they started with a build guide and then they were yeah, this game's actually pretty fun. You can find some really cool guides on YouTube. There's a ton of community members who do an awesome job covering their builds. As well as that, you can check out Max Rule. We have an assortment of builds. Number two, start your journey on softcore, even if you later want to go hardcore. Hardcore in this game is not easy, and it's usually something that people do once they kind of learn the game and they can manage it. There is a ton of things that will just destroy you in this game. So first learning about mob types, builds, damage defenses is a pretty good bet. It's going to be really hard to learn the game if you have to constantly roll a new character because you just died over and over. And once you feel confident, switch to hardcore. Number three, change your left mouse button to move only. This is mainly so that you don't accidentally default attack on enemies because that can get you killed real quick. Auto attacks are not really an important thing in Path of Exile. Also, once you're running out of mana, whatever skill you have will go to default attack anyways. Number four, adjust your options. There's a lot of things to talk about here. I'll just highlight the, in my opinion, most important ones. In graphics, put bloom all the way down to 25% unless you want to wear glasses once you're 40. Then go to the game tab. Now, in a perfect world, you would want to prepare a good item filter already, but that can be a little bit annoying and I know you probably just want to play. So for now, at least put in the default filter. Definitely come back to this later. Then you go to visual sensitivity and turn off screen shake. You scroll down, go to gameplay, tick always highlight. This makes it so stuff like your stash, crafting bench, especially NPCs are actually already named. You don't have to hover over them, which can be incredible, especially when you start out. You can disable this later if you don't like how it looks. Then tick always show sockets. This will make gem management a lot easier for you at the start. And you can also go to landscape transparency here under map to make it easier to see where to go on the mini map. Number five, tooltip DPS in this game is completely useless. There's a reason why a lot of people want to understand path of building so they can better understand their DPS. So yeah, don't look at your tooltip. It's nonsense. Number six, if you're struggling for School of Wisdoms, there is an easy way to go about it. You can sell Orb of Transmutations for four of them, Blacksmith Whetstones for four of them, or Armor Scraps for two of them. Number seven, attributes as a standalone are not that good in PoE. I'm saying this because there's ARPG franchises where attribute stacking is a thing. For example, if you're a ranger class, you want to get as much dexterity as possible. But in PoE, it's mostly just about getting enough attribute to fill your requirements in terms of skill gems and items. There are exceptions to this, so-called stat stackers, which are usually very expensive builds that will, for example, want a lot of strengths, dexterity, or intelligence, but that's mostly irrelevant for somebody starting out. Number eight, colors have an affinity towards certain stats. What that means is, for example, an item that requires you to have 50 intelligence will be more likely to roll blue sockets. The higher the requirement, the crazier the affinity gets. So if you need, for example, red or green sockets on a pure intelligence item, definitely look out for that. Number nine, weapon damage is quite confusing in this game. Spells do not get anything from base weapon damage, neither do minions. And there are weird stats on your weapon that say, for example, added fire, cold, lightning, chaos damage. Those apply to the weapon, but not to anything else. Same for increased physical damage on your weapon. These are called local mods, meaning they're not global. So for example, if you're a spellcaster, what you're looking for is added fire damage to spells 
or stuff like that. Two other things that are local are increased critical strike chance and increased attack speed. Especially the crit chance is important. You do not get this for your spells. Number 10, start using your crafting bench as soon as possible. The crafting bench basically gives you the ability to craft another mod on an item. You will unlock more and more of these over time, but the most important ones, especially early, are resistances and attributes. Attributes will make it easier to level up and equip your gems and items, while resistances will make you a lot tankier. And your gear will just be bad in general, so getting another mod is huge. Number 11, you can level gems in your weapon swap. This is useful for two things. First, you can actually level up gems other people want and sell it to them. Or more useful for your own build, later you'll want level 21 gems and you can only get these by corrupting level 20 gems and then you have a chance to get one. But the more you level, the more chance you get. Normally you can level up to six gems in your offhand with, for example, two one-handers. However, in endgame, there's another way. You can use a six socket bow and then either a Maloney's mechanism or a replica Maloney's mechanism for a total of nine gems. Number 12, don't be too squishy. PoE really rewards a good mixture of offense and defense. If you hear phrases being thrown around, like for example, glass cannon, a glass cannon is not the same in this game as in other games. It doesn't mean you have no defenses. It just means you have like six defensive layers instead of 12. This will especially become a problem once you hit act four or act five. So just be warned. Stuff like increased maximum life, and increased resistances are super important. Speaking of resistances, number 13, cap your resistances as soon as possible. This game is balanced around you capping your resistances. Resistances are capped at 75%, and if you're in the campaign, you don't have to be capped, but once you get into maps, you should definitely look into upgrading your gear. Once again, crafting bench can help out quite a bit. To give a little bit more context, resistances reduce your incoming damage. So for example, if you take 100 damage and you have capped resistances, so 75% resistance, that means you only take 25 damage. And since it's quite easy to get those resistances from items, taking only a fourth of the damage is incredible and it is a must have on every single build. Do note that your resistances will be permanently reduced by 30% after act five and by 60% after act 10. Number 14, essences are really strong for early game, not only because they give you a certain outcome deterministically, but mostly just because they make an item rare. It's hard to get orb of alchemies early. So just being able to slam an essence on any base item that you want is very, very advantageous early. Number 15, not all quests are made equal. In general, there are certain quests that give you skill points and then there's other quests that give you stuff like rare rewards. Usually if you wanna get through the campaign as fast as possible, only do the ones that give you skill points. I'll link your wiki page down below where you can see all those quests. Number 16, vendors restock after leveling up. This is incredibly important early in order to get your first four or three link or to get your first movement speed boots. So do check vendors whenever you level up. Number 17, if you're any kind of attack based build, check your accuracy often. Now, this is not really gonna be a problem if you're early level, level 10 or 20, but your chance to hit will decline quite drastically afterwards. The way to check for accuracy is you press C, and then in the offense tab, you'll see main chance to hit. Now, early on, a precision aura will do most of the trick, but if you cannot run it for some reason, then you will definitely have to look for other ways to get there. You don't have to be on 100%, from the get-go, but in endgame, you definitely do. Number 18, if you want to check which lab trials you're missing, you can, I mean, if you haven't already, you can go in here in Act 3, the Asburns Plaza, and then you can go up here to the Labyrinth Activation Device, and if you hover over these small icons, you will see which ones are completed and which ones aren't. Number 19 is about all the currencies that give quality. It matters what item rarity the item has that the quality currency gets applied to. So for example, if we take a cartographer's chisel and we put it on a normal map, it would give 5% quality. But if we would put it on a magic map, it would only give 2% quality and on the rare map, 1%. So always apply your quality before you're crafting an item. This doesn't just go for maps, obviously. Number 20, after you completed Lily's quest in Act 6, which is called Fallen from Grace, you will be able to access her and buy all gems. Even more importantly, you can ask her to join your hideout. So do that as fast as possible. She will be there even if you're rerolling a new character. Number 21, you can set your skills to always attack without moving. However, it's not in the options or something. 
but instead you go to the toolbar down here and there is this little button up there. Now, the way this works is some skills have range. And if you click a little bit too far ahead, your character will walk to be able to attack exactly where you clicked. This can get incredibly annoying, especially on melee characters, but also on stuff like totems. If you're in a hectic combat situation and all of a sudden your skill doesn't do what you want it to do and you're just wandering around during monsters attacking you, that is not a good deal. Number 22, you can reset zones in PoE by going to a waypoint, then control clicking whatever zone you want to reset, then clicking new. This can be really helpful if you just want to farm the zone again for XP or if something is bugged or if there is an unkillable rare with 200% movement speed chasing you around. Number 23 items have a maximum number of sockets depending on their item level. This is especially important to know if you bought a low level unique that might be GG even in endgame like Quill Rain and you just apply jeweler orbs and you wonder why it never goes to six sockets. However, not all is lost because if you use the crafting bench to six socket something, that disregards item level. Number 24, the more quality you have on an item, the easier it is to socket and link it. So for example, if you have an item that you know you're gonna craft, you might as well six link it before, right? Socket six link. And there's actually ways to get more than just 20 quality on your item. For example, Hillock. If you get him in Betrayal, you can get up to 30 quality on your body armor or your weapon. And as well as that, you can also use a perfect fossil. Just once again, be sure to use it before you craft your item because it also re-rolls all your mods. Number 25, uniques are not necessarily stronger than rares. In fact, rares are usually dominant in endgame, while uniques are a little bit more niche. So if you're coming, for example, from Diablo, that will be kind of a thing that you have to adjust to. And don't get me wrong, some of the biggest chase items in this game are uniques, but since the crafting system is so vast and there's a lot of tools available, rares are just a necessity. Number 26, if you accidentally picked up a useless quest item for a quest that you don't want to do, you don't have to keep it in your inventory. You can either put it in your crafting bench for now if you maybe need it later, or you can just dump it in a map or any area. You don't lose the quest by doing that, it will just reset the quest state. Number 27, increased and more is not the same in this game. Increased usually refers to its own bucket, meaning it is additive with each other. So for example, if you already have a thousand percent increased damage, getting the next 10% increased will just add on top and be really, really bad. Whereas something that says more will always multiply. This is especially noticeable, for example, in support gems and why it is so important to get a lot of links. Number 28, if you have annoying gems on the right side that you can't level or you're not planning on leveling, you can right click on the plus so it actually disappears. If you want to level the gem later, it is right here under your inventory. If you want to link an item in chat, you can do so by holding control, alt, and then clicking on the item. If you want to do some heists, but you kind of missed it during the campaign, you can always right click any rogue marker and it will open a portal there. If you want to have a minimap overlay, you can do so by pressing tab or whatever the minimap is assigned to in your UI. And then that's what's going to happen. It's basically going to switch between up top and on top of you and you can also use the arrow keys to put it somewhere else if you're wondering about trading in this game there is some ghetto ways to trade but the usual thing that you have to do quote unquote is actually you're going to have to get a premium stash tab you can either buy one directly or upgrade one of the ones you have already if you then right click on the stash tab and tick public people will see the items that are in your stash tab. You can then right click these items and price it for whatever you want. On that topic, if you wanna buy stash tabs, you can wait for a sale. They're usually around every two to three weeks. Number 34, let's say it's early in the league or you just started out and you need some chaos orbs to buy certain items. There's actually a recipe to get them directly without having to trade. In order for this recipe to work, you need a full gear set of rare items, that are between item level 60 and 74. And if you trade them, you will get one Chaos Orb. If you do that with unidentified items, you actually get two. There's also third-party programs out there that make this process even easier. While this is a nice recipe early, if you're in Trade League, you should probably be looking to do something else with your time later. 
Number 35, in Act 5, you will kill Justic Hercasticus and get a certain quest item that's called Eyes of Zeal. Once you get them, you have to open Global Chat and link it in there because they look like balls. Number 36, Utility Flasks do not stack their effects. For example, you can't just have two Quicksilver Flasks to get 80% movement speed. Same goes for any affixes that are on your flasks. For example, increased attack speed during effect. Number 37, you can control click NPCs to open their main function immediately. For example, June will open her Veil inventory, Kirak will open the map cell inventory, and most importantly, Lily Roth will open the cell inventory. Number 38, you can modify sockets on corrupted items by going to the crafting bench and doing it right here. Same goes for sockets, by the way. Now, do note that on top of the orb of fusing or jeweler costs, there is a one-to-one -one ratio that you have to pay in Val orbs as well. Alternatively, you can do this with tainted jewelers orbs and tainted or refusings. These give you a 50-50 chance to either add one socket or link or remove one. Number 39, if you're colorblind and you have problems seeing your sockets, you can go to UI and options under items and activate socket notches. This is how it looks like and it will most likely make it easier for you to distinguish. Number 40, if you go into your login menu, you can actually change the networking mode. There is lockstep and also predictive. If you play hardcore or you have a very stable connection on softcore, you should always go for lockstep. It is a lot smoother. However, predictive has been a complete game changer whenever I'm on a bad system or have a bad connection. Number 41, once you start mapping, you should avoid reflect like a plague. There's two different reflect mods, one for elemental, one for physical. Do not underestimate these. You cannot run them if you do any sort of elemental or physical damage. On some builds, if you have a lot of damage, even if you're like a conversion and you have like a tiny bit of physical damage, this might still one shot you. It's usually not worth adjusting your build to run these maps, just reroll them. Number 42, you can actually change your ascendancy. In order to do that, you have to complete any any lab that could also be just normal run through real quickly and then you have to unspec all your points in your ascendancy tree once you did that you go to the altar and choose your new ascendancy do note though that every single ascendancy point you want to refund costs you five refund points number 43 if you want to re-roll an item for example a map you don't have to use your chaos orbs if it's economically better or if you just don't have any on solo self hunt you can also scour the item get it to normal and then Orb of Alchemy it again. On that note, number 44, if you're low on Orb of Alchemies, you can also use Orb of Bindings. They have the same effect and can be used on items that don't have sockets as well. Number 45, do your Kirak missions. If you go to Commander Kirak up here, it will say Atlas missions. And on the left side, you can see how many you have for what tier. These are basically just free maps, which are incredibly potent, especially early whenever you want to unlock your Atlas. Do note though, that these are not using your Atlas passive tree. For example, if you find an essence in a Kirak map, you will not get any bonuses from there. However, you can use the Atlas passive tree to increase the chance on a map completion to get one of these missions. Number 46, if you click control while in the game, you will see that your task bar actually has more skill slots. Usually I use these for stuff like auras, but there's definitely builds that just need more than eight buttons. Also, if you're sloppy like me, it's nice to hide certain abilities that you don't want to deactivate accidentally during combat. Number 47, on your atlas on the left side, you can actually mass favor maps. In order to do that, you simply click on the favorite slot then you click on any item you want to favor. And then you don't have to do this 11 times again. All you have to do is click on the favor slot and then click on the favorite map you just allocated and you can do this 12th time really easily. Number 48, we're back at loot filters. This is something that early on you can maybe put in default if you don't want to think about it and you're just new to the game. But at this point, you definitely want to get one. I would personally recommend Neversync. He's very diligent in updating his loot filters. And as well as that, I have a loot filter guide about it down in the description. Don't worry, you don't have to set up your own. There are default filters, but if you want to customize it, info is in that video as well. Number 49, if you want quality on your gems, but you don't have money for GCPs, you can also level the gem to level 21st, then go to a vendor and put in that gem plus one gem cutters prism and you get a full 20 quality. However, this will de-level the gem to level one. Talking about de-leveling gems, number 50. If you, for whatever reason, want to de-level your gem just by one or two levels, maybe because of item level requirements, you can do so by putting in the gem and then an orb of scouring. 
This will reduce the gem level by one. You can also replace the Orb of Scouring with an Orb of Regret in there, and then it will de-level the gem all the way down to level one. If you're wondering whether you have all your passives and all your Atlas passives, you can just type it in chat, slash passives will give you a list of all the quests that you did, and slash Atlas passives does the same for the Atlas. Do note though that the slash passives only works after you completed Act 10. Number 52, do not hoard your currency. Let's say you drop a Divine Orb and everybody tells you that Divine Orb will go up over the next few days. Should you just keep it and wait? The answer is no. Let's say a Divine Orb only sells for 80 Chaos Orbs on day two of a league and you know a day four or day five maybe it would be 150. The problem is that doesn't really mean anything because Chaos is worth way more early as well. Also, currency in your stash doesn't do anything for you, whereas making your character stronger makes it so you can clear stuff faster and clear higher content, which correlates into currency again. Number 53, if you want to bulk buy something, meaning buying a certain amount of a currency, for example, you can go to bulk item exchange. And down here, there's actually an option of minimum stock. For example, if you set this to 10, you will only see people who have 10 or more of that currency. Number 54, whatever bandit you did in act two when completing the campaign, you can actually undo that decision later. The recipes are on the screen right now. Just know that once you right click the book of reform that you get from this vendor recipe, it will automatically allocate the favor that you wanted. Number 55, if you right click a stash tab, you will see down here there is certain affinities. For example, if you click on currency affinity and you then control click one of your currencies in your inventory into any other stash tab, it will automatically go into the stash tab that has a currency affinity. This is an absolute game changer and will make your loot experience infinitely better. So go and set up your tabs accordingly. One more thing to know is that if you want to ignore that functionality, you can just, instead of control clicking, control shift click it. Number 56, one of the most important third party programs and also the most dreaded one is Path of Building. Remember when I said DPS tooltip is completely useless? Yep, this program has it all. If you're a new player, I'd probably wait for this one a little bit, but just know that if you ever want to make your own build, this will nowadays almost be a necessity. If you want to sit through it, I actually have a one hour guide on it where I explain everything you need to know. Just know that this is probably the most awesome third party program I've ever used in any game. But if you just started out and you're too intimidated by it, I get that as well. Just at some point, maybe familiarize yourself with it. Number 57, if you're planning on buying a expensive unique Definitely check beforehand if you couldn't do it cheaper with divination cards. The way I do it usually is just go to the wiki page of that unique item and scroll down and you will see all the divination cards that can give it to you. Just make sure that the divination card actually gives you the item and is not just some gamble. Number 58, if you just priced an item and you get whisper after whisper, you probably screwed up somewhere. This can definitely happen and you can reprice your item. Just know that if you do that too often, you're going to land on a lot of ignore lists. Number 59, if you want to anoint your amulet and you don't know what oils you need, you don't have to look at the wiki. You can just go to the notable on the passive tree and click alt. On that topic, number 60, there are anoint only notables. So you can't get them on the passive tree only with anoint. You can't really see them in game. You can either go to the wiki, I guess, but path of building also shows them. Number 61, you can automate your flasks with instilling orbs. You can do this on the crafting bench itself. Other than some niche cases, the mods that usually get used are used when charges reach full or reused at the end of this flask's effect. This is especially strong if you're mapping a lot. However, if you're bossing and you need certain flask at a certain time and you need to time them, you probably don't want to do this. Do note though that you can always remove the enchant later. Number 62, you can craft your flask with bestiary. The way you do this is you basically get your flask ready and then you put them on the blood altar. If you scroll down to add a mod to utility flask, you will see there's options right here. A little disclaimer here, the mods that you get are not as good as they used to, but it's still nice to have in terms of options. Number 63, orb of bestiaries make it so you can sell your beasts. In order to do that, they get sold by Einhar right here, purchase items, they cost one chaos orb each. Then you have to press H, go to bestiary, go down here to captured beasts, and then you can filter the beasts for whatever you need. Click the bestiary orb, 
click on the beast, and there you go. Number 64, don't be too specific when searching for an item or maybe price checking your own item. Just because your item doesn't exist doesn't mean it's worth a thousand divines. That's basically because there's so many different roles that even though there will be a million items on the market, that doesn't mean that all of them will exist. And if you want to find items, then just know that there are certain tools available to easier find something. As an example, if you just want an item with a ton of resistances, you don't have to search for fire, cold and lightning. You can also go to total elemental resistances percentage. This would warrant its own video, but definitely play around with that. Number 65, if you're somebody who uses left mouse button to move, that doesn't mean that you can't also put a skill there. Now, what you want to put on left mouse are usually things that are instant and that you always want to have up. Most commonly used on left click are stuff like vortex, withering step, face run, but also stuff like guard skills. Do note though that if you very much rely on your guard skills for defense, you would rather put it on a cast when damage taken setup if you have the gem slots for it. Number 66, you can block people from using your portals. For example, if you're trading and you have a very expensive map open and you don't want to risk somebody to go in there, first you click on decorations, then you go to hideout options and here you will see different options. One of them is Portal access, you can put this uh, to all party members, friends, guildmates, or only you. Number 67, sacrifice fragments give your maps quantity. Now, you usually see these and they're just lying around. You're probably not farming it zero. If you don't use your map slots for anything else and you can just chuck it in, that is just free quantity right there. Mortal frags actually give 10% quantity, but they're usually not used because they're worth more because they lead to Uber Eziri. Number 68, if you're worried about six linking and you're meticulously looking at what you get, don't worry, you actually cannot roll over a six link. Once you get a six link, it will not let you apply another or refusing and it will give you an error message. Number 69, which is funnily enough also the Koita's number, there is different ways to get six links. You can buy cheap ones corrupted. You can get divination cards on leak start. You can buy bad bases. I made a whole video on this. If you want to check it out, it's linked down below. Or refusings can get really random and expensive. If you get unlucky, it might ruin your whole leak start. So definitely familiarize yourself with all the options. Number 70, we talked about affinities earlier, but this doesn't just go for your main stash tabs. You can also have this in, for example, your expedition locker or your heist locker it is down on the right side. Not all of your contracts and expedition stuff will go into this locker, so just don't forget to check it later for stuff you can sell. Number 71, you can actually swap resistances from your items. In order to do that, you go to your hoarder crafting bench right here, type in, for example, resistance, and you will see all the different mods that you can apply. This will also keep the tier of the resistance role, which is why I said earlier that you wanna be a little bit more vague maybe on searching items on trade, because you could find your GG item and if it has cold res but you need lightning you just go here and change it now number 72 you can list bigger stacks of items the way you do this is whatever you want to sell you right click it exact price now you come into this menu you can choose what kind of currency you want to sell it for usually chaos orbs or divine orbs now then for example here we have 10 instilling orbs let's say we want to sell 10 of them for 12 chaos then we first have to type in the amount of chaos. Don't get distracted. I know it's on the other side, but first type in the amount of chaos slash and then the amount you want to sell for 12 chaos. This is quite important to do because now people who just want to buy one are not going to bother you. If you want to only sell 10 at once, they won't even see it if they're searching for one. Important to know, you can do this in specialized tabs as well. Very important for stuff like currency or essence tabs in particular just make them public before. Number 73, especially important for people who don't have a map tab, if you alt while you're on a map, you will see down there if you have the Atlas map completed and you have the bonus objective already. But if you have a map tab, you can just hover over the item in your stash and you will see it as well. Number 74, you can unlock a five slot map device by running a so-called four way. In order to open that, you have to have four different timeless emblems doesn't matter which combination. And once you complete that encounter, your map slot device will go from four to five slots. Do note that you can also join other people or do it in a group of six and you will all get the unlock. 
Number 75, do not forget that you can also put incubators on your trinkets. If you're running a lot of legions, it might be worth unlocking your trinket slot after all. Number 76, on that topic, there's certain trinkets that actually work for mapping. The two most relevant being monsters have a chance to duplicate drop rogue markers and smugglers caches have a chance to duplicate contained rogue markers. So if you have a heist in your setup, it's definitely worth going for one of these. Number 77, you can horizon orb shaper maps. It doesn't just change the layout, it actually changes the influence on it as well. So for example, let's say you don't need a massive minotaur, but you need a hydra instead. That's how you get it. Unfortunately, though, this does not work for Elder Guardian maps. Number 78, fun fact that a lot of people who haven't played Beast Theory don't know, you can actually see your beasts. If you go to your menagerie and you go down here, you can see menagerie deaths, caverns, sands, and up here, wilds. If you go in there, yeah, there they are. Number 79, Path of Exile has a very passionate community and a ton of third party programs that you can use to make your gaming experience a lot more fun. If you don't know what they are, I made a video about it recently. Link is in the description. Number 80 is Trading Etiquette, which is kind of hard to describe. This probably needs its own video. Just know that there are certain things you don't really do. Good example of that would be if you're buying from somebody, it's basically expected of you to go to their hideout. So it's always the hideout of the seller. And once you get to their hideout, it is expected of you to not just trade them randomly. They might be doing something. They might be searching for the item. Once they're ready, they're going to trade you. Also, after the trade, it's nice to put in a TY, but just so you know, it's not necessary. There's a lot of people who trade a lot in this game. And since you can't really automate it, it gets really on your nerves. If somebody doesn't say thank you to you, don't be weird about it because he might have just done like 100 trades in the last 60 minutes. And also a lot of them are trade bots. Number 81, whenever there is a free mystery box after buying something from the store, you can actually trick this a little bit. Usually a mystery box costs $5. And if you don't really feel like buying something, but you still want the mystery box, you can get it for 50 cents by buying the cheapest thing on the shop, which is a Veda pet. If you're using Eldritch Battery to fix your mana costs with Energy Shield, you can add a free aura on top even if all your mana is reserved already. You use Divine Blessing supported with the aura that you want to use. This now turns your aura into a temporary buff that you have to click every so often at the expense of a flat mana cost. If the mana cost is too high, you can either decrease the level of your Divine Blessing or you can add inspiration support. If you have another fourth link open and you don't want to press the button for the aura that often, you can also add increased duration support. Number 83, if you're unlocking your pantheons and you don't really know which maps you have to complete to do them, you can go on your atlas with G and then type in the exact name of the boss and it will light up wherever that boss is on the atlas. Number 84, you can actually split your stacks of currency or whatever quite easily, which already a lot of people will know. You just shift and then click on it and then, yeah, just determine what stack size you want. However, there's a little bit more to it even. You can also type the number, which is especially important for stuff like harvest seeds, which go into the tens of thousands or rogue markers. For that, you shift click it again and you, you just have to type in the number real quick. Number 85, if you drop the map and you don't really know where it is on the Atlas, while having the Atlas open, you can right click it and it will basically zoom you right there. Number 86, there's quite an easy way to search for Conqueror and Elder maps on trade. For Shaper maps, that's really easy because they're already named. But for example, for Elder maps, you type in Occupied and then you can see right here, implicit map is occupied by, and then on the drop down, you can choose which boss you need. And for Conqueror maps, the easiest way is typing in Citadel, map contains Citadel, and then same drop down. On that topic, number 87, you can also search for specific veils on item. If you, for example, need it for an unlock on your crafting bench, you can type in veiled. You will see here off the veil, which is a suffix and veiled, which is a prefix. But not only that, if you actually know where your mod comes from, you can even go as far as, for example, go Elrion's veiled or Leo's veiled. Number 88 on that topic, you can also block veiled mods. Veiled mods are not crafts, which means you can still craft on them even if you haven't unveiled yet. Since certain mods are in the same mod tier, for example, on a ring, if you crafted mana, you cannot get hybrid mana with reduced cost anymore, basically eliminating that from the pool that you could unveil. So this way you can get whatever you want more likely. Number 89, if you clicked a shrine that you actually don't want, 
you can just remove it by right clicking the icon. Echo shrines can be really annoying for certain builds as well as that chill or shock shrines can drop your FPS, so that's what it's for. Number 90, you can directly import items from in-game or trade into your path of building. If you already have the item, just go in-game, hover over it and press Control C. Then you go to your path of building in the items menu and press Control V. If for some reason that doesn't work, you can also go to create custom Control V in there. The text should be in there, press create. And there it is. If you want to simulate an item from trade, you can go down here to the left bottom corner, copy item, and then control V it into your POB as well. This can be really awesome because you can check out the item in your POB, in your setup before you even buy it. Number 91, if you're having trouble finding a certain stat on POE trade, you can help yourself with typing in tilde. Usually you have to type exactly what the mod says in game, but with the tilde in front, you can just throw in words like, for example, damage minions. Number 92, if you're having trouble in boss fights and you don't know what to do with your flasks because maybe the boss fight takes a long time and your flask has almost no uptime, you don't regenerate any flask charges, what you can do is replace them with life flasks. Then you go to the Soul of Rislava Pantheon right here and you allocate it just for the fight basically. This gives you huge sustain for your life flasks and you will basically never run out. Now, this is mostly used on leak starters or kind of scuffed builds, but it's still really good to know. However, never replace your Quicksilver flask because you might still need that burst of speed to get out of sticky situations. Number 93, you can search stuff in this game with regex. Now, the thing is there is websites dedicated to giving you regex code to quickly find whatever you need or sort out tabs. I'm just a user though, so I can't really tell you more about it. However, I will link the websites down in the description. This is especially huge if you're rolling your whole inventory of maps and you can exclude certain mods that you don't wanna run, for example, Reflect. Number 94, if you have certain items that are really hard to color, for example, let's say you have a hubris circlet that has 154 int requirement and you need four red colors, there is another way to go about it. You can only craft up to three red sockets on the item. So if you had to do that over and over again until you hit the fourth red as well, that would on average cost you 1,581 chromes. What you do instead is you craft three reds, then you go to three sockets, afterwards four sockets, which will add another color, but it will keep your three reds. You do this spiel until you get your fourth red. And you can do this on all sorts of items and on average, it is a lot cheaper, especially with some of the high requirement items. Also, if you're wondering how I knew how much chromes it would take on average, there is a Vorici Chrome calculator linked down in the description. Number 95, if you're looking for a certain item that is really easy to get, it's very cheap, but there's just nobody responding. Now, especially late in the league, this can happen. People are online, but they don't want to do small trades. What you should be looking for is who listed it recently. If they listed it recently, that indicates that they actually want to sell it, right? Whereas other people listed it a month ago and just forgot about it. So you can go down here in the trade filter and go to listed. And then you can, for example, type in up to a day ago. Number 96, we talked about changing resistances with harvest earlier, but there is a little bit more to it. So not only can you change, for example, cold resistance to lightning, but you can also indirectly divine your resistance rolls. So for example, if you have 46 fire res, that bracket goes up to 48. So you change it from fire to cold, which re-rolls it within that bracket, and then back to fire again. And now you have a chance to get it all the way up to 48. Do this until you hit your perfect roll, GG. Number 97, if it's very early in the league and certain alternate gems do not exist, or if it is just very expensive to get certain alternate gems, you should definitely check if certain lenses exist where you can make it yourself. So if you go to the currency section on trade, you will see there is a prime regrading lens and a secondary regrading lens. Primary is used for active skill gems, whereas secondary is used for support gems. But not all alternative quality gems are made equal. They have different weightings. In order to show you this on PUEDB, I will take a fan favorite, which is Divergent Inspiration and show you how to make it. So down here, you can see Superior, Anomalous, Divergent and what kind of weightings they have. 
Now, in this case, for example, you wouldn't want to just take a normal inspiration and slap it on because then you only have a 50-50 chance to get a Divergent because both have 100 weighting. However, if you first buy an Anomalous and then apply it, you have a way higher chance, in this case, a 66.6%. .6 but on the flip side, don't get tricked into rolling for certain things. Like, for example, you might be astounded by the price of Anomalous Blood Rage, but there is a reason for that. The mod only has five weighting. So don't waste all your money. Check first if this actually makes sense for you. Also, you might get unlucky and it might be frustrating. Number 98, in PoE, you can group by seller. The way you do this is you go to the bulk item exchange, scroll all the way down, group by seller, yes. This can be a game changer if you're looking for full sets of things. For example, you're farming Uber Elder and you need uh, all the fragments kind of. And if somebody has more of them and different ones, then you want to see that. Number 99, if you're gambling with Tujin, you can actually redo your offering without clicking, just with the scroll wheel. You're welcome. Number 100, Beast Crafts Respect Item Level. So most beasts are maximum level 83 that you're going to buy, and you might not think too much about it. But this actually matters for some crafts. For example, if you're rolling a jewel and you need a mod that needs item level 84, which you have on your jewel, and the beast that you're rolling with, for example, prefix to suffix, is only 83, it cannot roll tier 1 mods. This is also used in mirror tier crafting, where people get low-level beasts to ignore certain mods in the mod pool and have a an higher outcome for the mod that they want. All right, you know what? The video was kind of clickbait. I actually got three more right here. Number 101. If you're having trouble with builds, you don't know where to go, there's not really a good build guide out, check Pee Ninja. Under builds, search for your main skill and see what other people are doing. You'd be surprised by how many people have really interesting takes. You can learn a lot from here. Number 102, if there's a lot of stuff on the ground and you have this weird bug where the item icons are kind of all over the place, you can click Z to reset the loot. You basically, that's the button where you hide loot and then you show it again and it should be arranged better. And number 103, if you're having problems finding the right timeless jewel, you can actually go to the timeless jewel calculator here on GitHub. Now you can do it in POB as well, but this interface is just so much easier. I would definitely check it out. First, you choose your timeless jewel then your Conqueror, and then you can basically just look for certain stats or enter a certain seed that you have. But yeah, that's about it. Hope you could learn a thing or two. Thanks for watching. And yeah, if you want to check my stream out, push.tv slash palstron. I also write for maxwell.gg. So if you want new player guides or build guides, especially for league starters and stuff like that, check that out as well. And yeah, this is still another slogan. See you next time.